I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when you face. It's before me, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk. By your side, I can only imagine what my eyes will see when you face is before me. I can only imagine, yeah. I can only imagine. To be surrounded by your glory, Lord, will my heart feel when I dance for you, Jesus? Oh, we know if you be still, will I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak it all? I can only imagine, yes, I can only imagine, sing surrounded by your, surrounded by your glory, Lord, will, Lord, will my heart be, will I dance, oh, we know if you be, will I stay,
Hallelujah. You may be seated. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Are we all fasting? Amen. Well, I said, if you cannot do three days straight, you can break at six. Is that okay? For those that are not used to fasting, you can do three days. It might be tough for some people, right? Yeah, it might be tough for some people. For those that are also taking medication, strong medication, that might be very difficult for them. But you can do, praise the Lord, break in the evening at 6. Just drink water and then break. Amen? We will be here tomorrow at noon. Amen. 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 Let's be here on time. Why I did that is that any time we're doing deliverance prayer or power prayer during service, we don't finish. Because service, we have order of service. There are a few things we need to do. So let's try tomorrow on Saturday, see how that goes. If not, we'll move it to Friday. But I prefer Saturday during the day. We have all time just to pray and to pray and to pray. Uh, Truly like that. So nothing will stop what we have to do. Amen? Now, have more book in store. If you don't have this, the new one, The Power to Overcome Depression. I know a lot of people want copies. So I will, if you want to purchase, I will give it to you after service and uh, autograph them. Amen? This is my newest book. And this is my third book, The Power for Living. The power for living. This is the third one. The power for living. And this is the power to overcome. The second one is the secret of peace. The secret of peace. The first one. That's the one you are reading. Amen. Amen. More books are coming. Pastor Masha books coming soon. Yes. A book is coming. Let me do this very quick so we can go home and rest and be back tomorrow. Let us get here on time tomorrow. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6, 16. I want to talk to you fasting with purpose. Fasting with purpose. I truly believe a lot of churches have stopped fasting. When you talk about fasting in church, people are like it's like a strange topic. But there are importance of fasting that we need to know. But the topic today, let me just do it quick. Fasting with purpose. Like what we are doing this week, three days straight or three days, we break at six, those that are doing that. We are fasting with purpose. Amen? There's a reason we are fasting. When you fast, you fast with purpose. Now, let's go to Matthew 6, 16. Matthew 6, 16. He said, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may be appear to men to be fasting. As surely I said to you, they have their reward. They have their reward. Let's go to first verse 17. He said, but you, when you fast, anoint your head, and watch your face. Uh huh. Anoint your head and watch your face. First question I want to ask you tonight Does God expect us to fast? 
you see here, God expects us to fast. Yes, God expects us to fast. You can see in verse 17, he said, when you fast, but you, when you fast, not if you fast. It's not if you fast, but when you fast. Amen? That means God expects us to do what? To fast. Amen? We don't need to wait for God to tell us to fast before we fast. Come on, can I hear amen to that? Most folks in the church, they're waiting for God to speak loud and clear. But we don't need to wait for God to what? To tell us to fast. There are needs for fasting. Anytime you feel you need to fast, just go ahead and do what? And fast. So today, let's talk a little bit about the purpose of fasting. Purpose of fasting. I truly believe if you know some of the purpose of fasting, you will be fasting all the time. I truly believe if you know it, if you don't know, you won't fast. Amen? But when you know the purposes of fasting, I know the purposes of fasting, I fast almost every week. Sometimes, Sunday, I don't eat until after the service. During the week, I fast because I understand the purposes of what? Of fasting. Number one. Remember, topic is fasting with purpose. Fasting with purpose. Number one, fasting purifies and detox our spirit. Fasting purifies and detoxes our spirit. Our spirit needs to be purified because we live in a that is very toxic in our environment so much happening in the realm of the spirit I mean I'm not talking about someone doing witchcraft against you I'm just talking about the environment that we live in this world so many things happening in the realm of the spirit that affect our world our spirit let's go to 2 Corinthians 7 1 2 Corinthians 7 one. It's very important. That's why I fast all the time. Glory to God. I fast the one. He purifies and detoxes our spirit. Second Corinthians 7 1. He said, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness. There's so much filthiness in the world. That we live in right now. Even at your workplace, so many things they are releasing in the atmosphere. A lot of things they are saying that is not good for our spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, Let us cleanse ourselves from filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Of the flesh and spirit. Of course, we know that our spirit needs to be cleansed. Our spirit needs to be purified. Our, our flesh needs to be purified and needs to be what? To be cleansed. From flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So when we fast, fasting does not change God. Come on, can I hear Amen. We are fasting now is not to change God. We are fasting is not to change God's mind. What are we doing? We want to change ourselves. We want to cleanse our spirit. Our spirit has impurity. Our spirit has been accumulated with impurities. So we want to cleanse it. That's why it's good to do fasting regularly. Some people just find themselves that just start getting upset for no reason. That's not you, but the environment that we live in affects our flesh, and our flesh affects our spirit. Yes. So fasting does not change God. It changes us. Our spirit has impurities accumulated 
over time and in need to be cleansed. Number two, fasting strengthens our prayer life. Fasting strengthens our prayer life. Amen. The more you fast, the more you want to pray. Amen. So fasting strengthens our prayer life. When we are fasting, we are what? Seeking God is the main thing to do in fasting. Number one thing we should do in, when we fast is to seek God. Can I hear amen? I know we need some things from God, but before we ask God anything, we should seek his face, not his hands. Amen? So fasting purifies our prayer life. Amen? Now let's talk. I've given you two purposes of prayer, of fasting and prayer. One, fasting purifies and detox our spirit. The word detox means to cleanse it, to purify it. Amen. From all filthiness of this world that we live in. Then the second one is fasting strengthens our prayer life. Now let's talk a little bit. I'm going to be brief. I want to go home and come early. We're going to pray tomorrow. Oh my God. This is going to happen in the spirit realm. What are the powerful benefits of fasting? Benefits of fast, fasting. I've given you purposes of fasting. It purifies our spirit. Detox our spirit. It strengthens our prayer life. Amen. What I learn when I'm fasting, when I pray, I don't get tired of praying. Can I get a witness to that? When I'm fasting, I pray more. When I'm fasting, it's like I don't want to stop. Amen. Because prayer strengthens my, you know, fasting strengthens my prayer life. I just go on and go on and go on. I don't feel it. But when I'm not fasting, when I'm eating, even food makes me tired. Amen. Food just where you die. You don't want to pray. You pray about 30 minutes. You are tired. You want to go to take a nap. Amen. But when you are fasting, hallelujah, your spirit is sharp. Your spirit wants to go on and go on and go on and pray and pray and pray. That's why the devil don't like us to fast. Amen. So let's talk a little bit about the benefit. Powerful benefits of fasting. Number one, fasting remove mountains from your life. Fasting remove mountains from our lives. When we pray, God moves some mountains. But when we consecrate our prayer with fasting, all these big mountains that want to stop us, God move them away. There are some things that, that will not be moved until you pray. There are some mountains, there are some challenges of life. Attack of the enemy that is blocking us from moving forward that will not be moved until we pray. Can I hear amen to that? Come on, can I hear amen to that? What are mountains? Mountains are obstacles that stand in our way from fulfilling our purpose or our destiny. Mountains are obstacles. They are not visible obstacles but they are mostly spiritual obstacles. 
if you find yourself that you've been stagnant in life, let me tell you, that's the time to go into prayer and fasting. I know we declare this year is a year of manifestations. If you haven't seen no manifestation, it's time to fast. It's time to fast and ask God to move those mountains. Are you hear what I'm saying? When you see yourself stagnant in life, things are not moving in life. Everybody are moving forward, but you are in the same place. I'm telling you, there's an obstacles that need to be moved. These are not physical obstacles. These are spiritual obstacles. And the only way you can move them, you can only move them in the spirit realm. I say in the spirit realm. By fasting and praying. Sometimes a day fasting will not do it. You might have to do three days water. Three days no food. Or sometimes we do three days dry fast. Hello. Look, I see you guys didn't like that. Dry fast. Dry fast means no food, no water. I tested somebody during the week. Our flyer that we are doing three days, it tests me back. He said, Pastor, that is death. Imagine a Christian. He says, It's death. I said, well, I'm not trying to kill you. <laughs> I'm just trying to empower you so the obstacles might be moved from you. Amen. I'm serious. It's death. Death? Just three days. Jesus did 40 days. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Jesus did 40 days and 40 nights. I didn't say even seven days. Three days. You tell me it's death. So I'm not trying to kill you. I'm just trying to help you. Are you hear what I'm saying? Now, what are mountains? These are serious. If we are not moving forward in life, we remain in the same place for many years. Know that there's a mountain because the enemy is trying to stop you. All you need to know is for you to know there's greatness ahead of you, but there's obstacles that stand between you and your breakthrough. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So mountains are obstacles that stand in our way to fulfill our purpose or destiny. They arise when someone is advancing the kingdom of God. If you are doing anything to advance the kingdom of God, you will be challenged. There will be obstacles. That means you have to pray and you have to fast for God to move the mountain. Amen. These mountains are meant to stop the advancement, advancement of the kingdom of God. So we have to be aggressive. We have to pray. We have to fast. Sometimes we have to do some radical fast. Radical fast. That's what I tell you three days. The year is coming to an end. There's some things God needs to do. There's obstacle between us and our breakthrough. That obstacle has to be moved. Amen. That obstacle has to be moved. Indulances have to be moved because we are doing a great work. Amen. So number one, fasting removes mountains from our lives. I mean, think they have mountain in front of them. I mean, think there's something that's been hindering them. I'm telling you, that's why tomorrow, that's why I don't want to do this prayer during service. I want to come for us to cry out to God and cry out to God and cry out to God and cry out to God. We don't need to wait, worry about, you know, we're going to have something else to do after that. We are just coming for prayer tomorrow. I don't know. Are you not tired of being tired? Yes. We got to pray. We got to pray. And we got to pray. And we got to pray until God come down and move the mountain. And God will come down tomorrow. I say God will come down tomorrow and move that mountain. I'm telling you things will begin to change because we're going to cry out to God that every mountain be removed. Amen. Amen. 
Anytime we're doing great work, the enemy always try to stop us. These mountains must be moved in the mighty name of Jesus. Mountain of barrier must go. Sometimes it could be sickness that enemy is using as a barrier to slow you down. It could be, I'm telling you, it could be sickness. So mountains are obstacles that stand in our way between our purpose and our destiny. Anytime we are doing something for the kingdom of God or something that will advance the kingdom of God, the enemy always try to stop us. Amen. So we have to fast. Fasting is to consecrate our prayer. Amen. When I say, well, but I've been praying, I've been praying, I've been praying, that mix it with fasting. In other words, consecrate your prayer with what? Fasting. Some demons, if you don't fast, they won't go anywhere. If you like, you scream. They know you just finished lunch. They ain't going nowhere. Amen? All right. Mountains are bigger than one another. I don't know what's your mountain, but if you have a big mountain, you have to do some radical fasting and radical prayer. Can I hear amen to that? Some of the benefits of fasting. Number two, fasting deal with certain kind of demons. Fasting deals with certain kind of demon. Some demon you command them to go, they will go. But some, if you don't fast and fast and pray, they're not going nowhere. They will tell you, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? Amen. Let's go to Matthew 17, 21. I won't read everything. You know the scripture. When they bring that boy to Jesus, the disciple could not cast it out. Remember those days, the disciple was not fasting. Amen. Jesus says they, they, they don't have to fast. God, the E is with them. Remember? You see, because he was with them, they don't have to fast. Actually, they went to him. They said, well, how come we don't fast? As John the Baptist disciple fasted. He said, no, you don't need to fast because I am with you. Well, guess what? When I'm gone, you're going to need to fast. You're going to need to what? To fast. So they brought that boy to Jesus. The disciple could not cast out the demon. They couldn't cast it out. So the father went and reported them and they went to Jesus. You know, that was deliverance. Actually, the boy had a strong man called deaf and dumb spirit. That's a strong man. The disciple couldn't do it. But Jesus cast it out and he told them this kind. Not that kind, but this kind. There are some demons, I mean, don't rebuke them, they will go. But there are some demons who rebuke, they will rebuke you back. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So Jesus said, however, this kind would not go except by what? Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. So, number two is fasting deal with certain kind of demon. Certain kinds of demons. Especially if you have to do with the bloodline. If you have to do with the familiar spirit. If you have to do with um, a, a strong man. There are strong men in the Bible. The Bible teaches us about we have to work. Pray and fast. Amen? Some demon will not live only with prayer, but when you combine prayer and fasting is the weapon 
of fasting. There's a weapon in fasting that will drive them away. Amen? Now, let me move swiftly to the next one. I think the last one. Then we're going to dismiss. I love this next one. Fasting is a spiritual weapon. Fasting is a spiritual weapon that produces spiritual power. Fasting is a spiritual weapon that produces spiritual power. Spiritual power. Let's go to Matthew 4, 1 and 2. You know the story when Jesus, before he started his ministry, he went on the mount and fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Not three days. Then Jesus was led by, led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. To be what? Now let me ask you, why did Jesus went on a mountain? I know you never see that before, that way. Why? Why did Jesus, is right there, the Bible said to be tempted. So he went to fast and pray so that God can empower him, so God can give him spiritual weapon, so that God can give him spiritual power to confront the devil. To confront the devil. He has to go. Or it's like that. He said, but he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be what? To be tempted. By the who? By the devil. So he went there intentionally. The Holy Spirit went, took him there to fast 40 days and 40 nights before he started his ministry. Before he started his ministry, he was prepared to confront. Because sometimes you are called, but you have to, you're going to be proven. The enemy will prove you. God called him the son of God. They say, if you are the son of God. <laughs> are you hear what I'm saying? If you, he has to be proven. You are the son of God. You prove it then if you are the son of God. Even though God said he's the son of God. But the devil still wants to prove him. Prove yourself. Or you say, oh, I am called in the deliverance ministry. The devil say, okay, prove yourself. Cast me out. Then you are called into the ministry. Or cast some of my demons out. It was, it had to be proven. It was fasting to confront the devil. Hallelujah. He was preparing to be tempted by the devil. Amen. Tomorrow we're going to confront the devil. See, now this can now. Don't see me. Okay, don't worry. I will confront it for you. Amen. At one point, you got to confront him. Release my blessing. Amen. So Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. So the Holy Spirit knew he's going to be tempted. Holy Spirit knew that Jesus was going there to be tempted by the devil. He has to prove himself that he's qualified. He has to prove himself that he is the son of God. And when he has fasted 40 days and 40 nights, after he was hungry, of course, you know what happened? The devil went to him and gave him a nice loaf of bread. No, the devil tell him, turn the stone. Since you are the son of God, you have the power to do miracle. So turn the stone to what? Temptation. Jesus rebuke him. Even during this fasting, how many were tempted to eat? Oh! 
all of this hand. And that is true. Thank you. Thank you for lifting your hand. You are tempted to eat a little something, something, something. Or you are tempted to break your fast. I mean, during this fast, they have a sharp headache, migraine headache. Okay. How many do the first thing you are angry? And the moment the angry comes, you say, you know what? I'm going to eat anyway. Amen. So you are tempted, but you overcame. Because fasting is a what? spiritual weapon. Amen. That's why temptation is so powerful during fasting. The enemy wants you to stop what? Fasting. So fasting is a spiritual weapon that produces spiritual power. Fasting is a fundamental part of walking in the power of God. Fasting? I know I didn't give the notes to media. Fasting is a fundamental mental part of walking in power. If you want to walk in the power of God, you must learn how to fast. If you want to walk in the power of God, at least you should fast two or three times a week. Walk in power of what? Of God. Amen. Amen. I remember years ago, I went to India. The Lord told us to do what? 40 days fast. Just day, not at night. You know that word? Break at what? Six. 40 days before I travel to India. Then when I get to India, God said, continue. God doing administration. I don't eat anyway. We fast. And break in the evening. I went there, fasting and break in the evening. During crusade, oh my God! I didn't even lay hands. I didn't pray, but the Holy Ghost was healing, was healing people. Deliverance was happening. Amen. Because during the forty-day fast, guess what, what was happening? God was depositing spiritual power into my spirit. That's what happened in fasting. When you fast, guess what happened? There's a deposit of power of God into your spirit. That's why the enemy don't want you to fast. That's why the enemy wants you to eat. But when you fast, hallelujah, you come out. Uh, even those demons, uh, they will begin to exit. Uh, because you have already overcome them in the spirit of them. They know that you are loaded uh, in the power of God. Because they know that God has deposited spiritual power inside of you. Hallelujah. That's why a lot of people don't like deliverance ministry. A lot of ministers, they don't like to be in deliverance ministry. Hello? Constant fasting. Constant prayer. Amen. Those are people you fast for. Their demon will come challenge you. Say, you are the big boy. I'm coming to get you too. That's why anyone in deliverance ministry always praying and always want fasting. Because the more you fast, guess what happened? God would deposit spiritual power in your spirit. Amen. Amen. Come on, let me repeat this. Fasting is a fundamental part of working in power. That's what Jesus did in Matthew one, uh, Matthew four, one and two. The Holy Spirit led him because the Holy Spirit wanted to deposit what power inside of his spirit, power for ministry, power to cast out demons, power to heal, power to deliver, power for miracle, power of God. Hallelujah! Glory. Power does not come by eating three square meal. 
power come. No, it's fundamental. I'm telling you. Hello? Come on, I mean more power. You must like fasting. You must like to pray. Because it is the fundamental working in power. If you want to work in power, you must fast all the time. Can I hear amen? You wouldn't believe I went to India, miracle was happening. Deliverance was happening. It was so easy. Things were just happening. Because I was still the one doing it. It was the power. The moment the power identified that someone have spirit or someone want to be healed and they have faith, he releases himself. Their faith releases it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Their faith releases that power. Hallelujah. Then I remember when I was coming back. All of those demons, one of them, the stronger ones, follow me. In Mumbai, I went to the plane, in the plane. I was flying back. True story. I was flying back. I was so tired. Because normally, I would preach last in Mumbai. Mumbai, that's why I bought and come back to America. I was coming back, finished preaching that same night. That's it. I got 2 a.m., 3 a.m. flight. So the moment I finished preaching, go back to the hotel, get my luggage, and check out. I went on, you know, on the plane. The plane took off. We were going. I just closed my eyes and sleep. Closed my eyes. Guess what happened? There was a big serpent. Woo! On the plane. I said, ah, how did you get in? You didn't even buy a ticket. You come in with it to America. Because there's a territorial spirit. When I came to America, remember I first fasted 40, 40 days? I fasted about 14 days while I was there. When I was coming back, when we landed, I was so excited. I'm coming to eat mama's food at home. I'm serious. Then when I get home, guess what I had in the spirit? God sent another 40 days. Another 40 days. But I did it. At first, I like. I said, Lord, is that you? <laughs> I went to start the beginning demon. The devil is a liar. You want to kill me? That was God. Do you believe that serpent began to follow me? Enter my sleep, sometimes will appear. Big things. It was a territorial demon that came out from somebody, or maybe in that in the, um, that area that I went. Jurisdiction. Close my hand, I will see it. So thank God, I begin to fast. I begin to pray. To the extent, one day, in the spirit, my back was against the wall and it came. There's no way I can go. But it's good to fast. When you fast, what God was doing, he was depositing spiritual power in my spirit to tackle that territorial demons. The moment he came for the last time, I confronted him. I said, no, no, no. I tried I was sleeping. No, no, no. I woke up. I said, no. I rejected in the name of Jesus Christ. From that day on, he never show up again. And that's what happened when we fast. Amen. When we fast, God deposit what? Spiritual power into our spirit. Even these three days that we are doing, if you have been fasting and you have been praying, what God will be doing into your spirit, he will be depositing spiritual power into your spirit. As you do this often, guess what happens? Some mountain that won't go as you grow in the spirit, they will leave you and leave you alone. Because now your spirit is growing. You are waxed in the spirit of the living God. Can we say amen to that? Come on, can we say amen to God? So prayer and fasting and Powered us 
he empowers us to defeat the enemy. That's what happened. So me, when God said 40, thank God I did the 40 again. Prayer and fasting empower us to defeat the enemy. Amen. If you don't have prayer life and you don't fast, that means you lack power. That means you lack what? Power. In order to have power, you must have prayer life and what? Fasting life. Amen. Amen. You cannot be stagnant if you are a prayer warrior and you fast with purpose. You must fast with what? Purpose. You can never be stagnant. Mountain will move. Amen. Obstacle will move. Barrier will move. Because as you fast, God is empowering you with what? Power. Power to defeat the enemy. Power to move obstacles away from your life. Power to do great things in your life. Glory to God. Power to possess your possession. Hallelujah. Power. Glory to God. He come by fasting and prayer. Amen. I love it. That's why Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be what? To be tempted by the what? Devil. But the, before the devil tempted him, guess what happened? He was at the end of the 40 days. Jesus was already empowered. God has deposited spiritual power inside of him. So the devil could not overcome him. Hallelujah. That's what God prepared us. Amen. These three days is preparation for tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow we're going to pray. Tomorrow everybody will confront their own obstacles. Oh God, you will pray for yourself. Oh God of heaven, because you have been praying and fasting for three days, God has deposited power inside of you. Can I hear amen? Come on, can I hear amen? Come on, can I hear amen? When that's why I pray and we fast, I can tell the devil, what is your name? He will tell me, tell them, they will tell you. What is your name? Sometimes I say, begin to confess. You'll be confessing. It takes power. If you don't have prayer life, say, What's your name? We'll tell you to shut up. He say, Who are you? Who give you authority over me? Power. We command it to begin to confess. Yes. That's a long level of deliverance. Amen. Speak. What is your name? Where you come from? How do you get there? Well, how do you get the good right? It takes power. It takes prayer. Yes. A month of prayer and fasting. Come on, somebody. So fasting is a fundamental part of walking in power. You want to walk in power, you must fast regularly. That's why Jesus went on the mountain to be prepared to face the devil. Prayer and fasting empowered him to defeat the devil. We also, as believers, we must fast. Amen? Come on, church. We must fast. Amen? We must fast. If you're going through challenges in life, go into prayer and fasting. Amen? Fasting does not change God. Fasting changes us. Amen? Prayer does not change God. Prayer changes us. We need to change, not God. God cannot change. Immutability of God. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He changes not, but we need to change. Our situation needs to change. Our trial needs to change. Lack needs to change to blessing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sickness after the must go. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Those demons that is challenging us must go in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. When we pray, God empower us. And when he empower us, we can confront the enemy and we can overcome the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ. Tomorrow, get ready, get ready, get ready. We're going to confront the enemy. We're going to pray. We're going to tell the devil, leave my blessings alone. Leave me alone. I belong to God in the name of Jesus Christ. You must go. You are taken. You must disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a time for manifestation. Can I hear amen? Come on, can I hear amen? When you fast, God makes spiritual deposit. Oh, I love this. I love this. When you fast, God makes spiritual deposit of power into your spirit. Spiritual deposit. Most people don't know. That's why they don't like to fast. Time to fast is time for deposit. God deposit spiritual power into your spirit. The first thing it will do, it will purify and detox your spirit. Remember purpose. Fasting the world and prayer the world. Purify and detox. Cleanse your spirit. Then after your spirit is cleansed, hallelujah, it's time for deposit. God will begin to deposit spiritual. Let me ask you, when was the last time God deposited power in your spirit? God, most people didn't know. This is not being taught in the church. It isn't for fasting. Amen. I mean, God going to deposit spiritual power in your spirit, you will love to fast. That's what motivates me to fast. I love to fast. Amen. Yeah, Pastor Major too, right? They love to fast. When I take them, when we go three days, we don't eat. We pray. I will fast. And we don't get hungry, really. Because the more you fast, as you pray and pray and pray, Time goes. You don't even feel it. And what God does, He deposit spiritual power into your spirit. Glory to God. I like it. After that deposit, when I go for crusade, sometimes I'll just, I'll blow. people begin to fall. People begin to be here. I'm serious. Because I know God has deposited. But before deposit, I don't do that. Before the bossy, if you don't the bossy, I don't do that. I know the spirit is sharp. I know God has deposited spirit power into my spirit. People heal. Absolutely. Let me tell you one testimony. I remember we have the people here. They saw it. We had a crusade in Baltimore. Yeah? We need to go back to do that. God said, start doing that. They brought the lady. That was deaf and dumb from a mother's womb. How many was deaf? Deaf and mute. Deaf and what? Mute. Never spoke before. Never heard before. They brought her to the crusade. Right? From New Jersey. They brought her from New Jersey. The moment she came, you know what God told me to do? I didn't pray for her anymore. Are there, you know what I do. What do I do? Who was there? So, what do I do? Huh? God said, Take my jacket and put it on her. I didn't even pray because God knew what He has already deposited why we are praying and why we are fasting. I didn't touch her, I didn't even pray. God said, Do the jacket. I threw the jacket. She slain in the spirit. When she got up, she heard and she and she spoke. They were there. They saw it. She heard and she spoke. 
But that don't happen with three square meal. No, it doesn't happen. Because when you have a three square meal, you are not allowing God to deposit spiritual power into your spirit. Hallelujah. When God deposits, don't stay in your spirit. He will be like Peter. Peter, in the, in the Bible time, they fasted so much, his shadow healed the sick. His shadow. It was so loaded. The spirit was so much power. If you come close to him, you're going to slain in the spirit. It takes prayer and fasting. Then I will stop here. When we fast, God makes spiritual deposit of power into our spirit. Every time you fast, it reproduces the power that comes out it reproduce every time you are you fast the power of god is a power that has the ability and capability to reproduce itself yes the power of god is only power that has the one the ability you don't need to charge it into the electrical electrical he has the one, the ability to do all, to reproduce himself. And the more you take her, the more it's deposited. Are you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Every time you fast, it reproduces the power that come out from you. Hallelujah. In the day of Pentecost, power was deposited on the believers as they begin to pray and to fast. They develop and the power reproduces itself. When you read Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 5, the Bible says the power multiplied. Go read it. It multiplied. But mind you, power does not multiply by itself. Church, you are not getting me. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. You're not getting it. God will deposit a little bit here. If you don't fast and pray, it will not reproduce. The more you pray and the more you fast, that means that power increases. That power being reproduced. Power. Oh, God of heaven. I got to stop. It reproduce. Fasting reproduce the power that already inside of you. You will see the apostle, the Bible say that the word, the power, the word, the multiply. They only receive power in the day of Pentecost. Power that they receive, it was like a seed. If you don't water it and nurture it, it will not be produced. So you have to nurture it. You have to pray. You have to fast. You have to live godly life. You have to stay in the path of righteousness. As you fast and pray, that power reproduces itself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's what then you will find out as you grow in the Lord and fasting, those demons you are dealing with before, they're going to pack their luggage and they're going to go. Sometimes you don't need to cast them out because the power is increasing inside of you. Now they cannot stay. They know what God has shaken the posha. Masakata. They know what God is depositing inside of you. They knew that the power is being reproduced inside of you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They're going to go. You don't need to cast them out. They know when to go. They know who you are. They know what is inside of you. They know if your power has increased or you still have the same power. So they will say, Jesus I know, Paul I know, even Jason Reed. 
I know him too. I got to go. I got to go. Are you hearing me? I'm going to stop here. When you know what fasting do to you. Oh man, get excited. When time for fasting, I get excited. It's a time for God to, de- to, to, to deposit. It's a time to reproduce the power that is already there. It's going to increase. Hallelujah. I love it. He makes my job very easy. Very easy. I remember at the beginning of my ministry, sometimes I have to lay hand before God heal. Now I just do speaking. God will heal. No, you didn't get it. No, you didn't get it. That's what God was trying to teach Moses. In the beginning of his ministry, he had to strike the rock. At the end of the ministry, Peter, I mean, Moses didn't know what God had deposited in 40 years. God said, you don't need to strike it. You don't need to smash it. You don't need to kick it. All you have to do, speak it. Speak it. I gotta go. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. When the power reproduces, you don't do lay hand. Just speak it. God will heal. Speak it, God will deliver. Show up, God will deliver. Hallelujah. Scream, they will be delivered. Yay! 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 It's happening. It's happening in the spirit realm. My shaka pa yekateria. Mateke po shapaya. Yes! Yes! Yeah, and you have them saying, Maseke po shapaye, Maseke telebo shapaya. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Oh, it's because people don't know what fasting does. If you know, you will love to fast. You will love to fast. Oh, man. If you are in the power ministry, those that are in power ministry know what I'm talking about. When you fast and you fast, it makes your work easier. Amen. How do people cast out demon? For my seven days, they see binding. All right, I'm going to go. My GK for Saye Ketelia. Meseke for Shapaha. Meseke here Hataba. Ketere Kopa Tere Keteria Saye Ketelia. Father, we thank you. Mighty God, we thank you. Might is strong in this place. My Jekete, because you are fasting. We are fasting. Amen. You are loaded with spiritual power. God has been deposited. Has been deposited. In Jesus' name. I'm going to stop here. Come on, let's stand and begin to praise God. Come on, let's begin to bless God. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, begin to bless God. Come on, begin to exalt His name. Begin to exalt His name. Begin to magnify His name. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Manjere ke tere vos apaye. Manse ke sopo yapaye. Leze boko pase de ke tele ke ye. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Father, we exalt your holy name. Father, we magnify your holy name. Father, we give you praise and glory. Oh, come on, somebody begin to bless him. Come on, somebody begin to bless him. Come on, somebody begin to exalt his name. Come on, come on. Oh, yeah, let the power is reproduced. Fast and reproduce that power. My shake for so for your car. Lay the level go to the most of the yaki. My man so go pass a yaki. Meme seke poco patelic. Lazaka poco patelic. Meme so go pass a yaki. Yes. 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 Rataka pa yaki. Yes. 
Le pépé de tes démons. Maman, son compagnie, le gué. T'es tel le merveilleux. T'es tel le merveilleux. Comment t'es qui Comment tu bless him? Clap those hands. Clap those hands. I bless him. Come on. Clap those hands. I bless him. Clap those hands. I bless him. Rassé, t'es tel le merveilleux. Maman, son compagnie, que t'es né. Yes. Bless him. Bless him. Bless him. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God, we bless you. Ah. 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 I hear breakthrough. I hear breakthrough. Somebody's breaking forth. Somebody's breaking forth. Somebody breaking forth. Breakthrough. 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 Manjaka Manjake. Manjaka Manjake. Mezeke Pochapa. Mezo Kopa Yaka. Mezeke Kopa. It's happening. It's happening. In the spirit realm. It's happening. Manjaka Baja. Manjaka Motoko. Terekete. 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 Yes. 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 Man, so go back to get. Man, so go back to get. Man, uh -huh. it's happening. I tell you, it's happening. Man, so go back to get. Man, so get. Man, so go back to get. Man, so get. Take it. Take the power. Take the power. Take it. Man, so go back to get. Man, so go back to get. Man, so go back to get. Father, we thank you. 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 Begin to thank him for what he will do tomorrow. Thank you for breaking forth. We are breaking forth. You are breaking forth. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are breaking forth. Ah, yeah, yeah, Baba Sokoba. You are breaking forth. La Baba Sokoba. Name is a get in the hair. You are breaking from break forth, break forth. Ah, ah, take the fire, take the fire of the Holy Ghost, take the fire of the Holy Ghost, take the fire of the Holy Ghost, take the fire. Maka poko pase, pase popo sapanke. I'm breaking forth. I'm breaking forth. In Jesus' name. What we've been doing, there's a reason it wasn't one day, it's three days. That's what we call breakthrough. What is breakthrough? Breakthrough. Is accumulation of spiritual power. Breakthrough is accumulation of spiritual force to break forth. I prophesy that tomorrow you will break forth as you are gathered in that spiritual power. Oh God, you are gathering what we call momentum, momentum to leap. Momentum to break forth. You will break forth in Jesus' name. I say you will break forth in Jesus' name. There shall be miracle in your life in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare it and so shall it be. Come on, somebody shout. Come on, somebody bless him. Come on, somebody exalt him. Come on, somebody give him praise. I have a Koban Saka. Let's say get more so more so many. Let's say get the level higher. Break through, break through, break through, break through, break through. You can't forget this. Fasting also reproduce spiritual power. It reproduces as we fast and as we pray. Fasting also, when we fast, 
It is a spiritual weapon. And God used that spiritual weapon to deposit spiritual power inside of us. That's why the anointing in our lives increases. Every believer has the anointing, but we have a measure of anointing. The more you pray and you fast, you multiply or increase that anointing of God. Amen. So if I tell you to fast, I'm not trying to kill you. I want you to be empowered to kill the devil. To confront the devil. So you will be able to stand the devil. That's what Jesus did. Temptation didn't come at the beginning of fasting. Temptation came when? At the end of the fasting. Because the spirit want to what? confront, want to prepare him, empower him to confront the enemy. And he overcame. In Jesus name. You will overcome. I say you will overcome. I say you will overcome in the name of Jesus. I say you will overcome in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. I, I'm going to start. Tomorrow is another day. We're going to be praying tomorrow. No, no long teaching, maybe. Just talk to you, exalt. Then we're going to pray, 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 pray. We've been fasting and building up or accumulating that spiritual force to break forth. And you will break forth. And there shall be testimony. It will be breakthrough, spiritual breakthrough, financial breakthrough, miracle. God will do it in your life in the name of Jesus. But honestly, we need to do more of this. We need to do more of this. We need to do we just want a month. We need to do more of this. The more we pray, things will happen. Those mountains that are hindering us from getting to where we're supposed to go to, possess what we're supposed to possess. God will move them. It take prayer and fasting, church. Amen. Even our environment nowadays is so toxic, man. Our environment. Go to places where we go. Remember, we are not part of this world. We are just passing by. Some of the things that's going on in the environment, some of the things they are saying that we are hearing, you know, it affects our flesh. It affects our spirit. And one of the purposes of pray, or of fasting is to purify and detox our spirit and our flesh so we can receive from God. Amen? Come on, are you blessed tonight? Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. We're going to take offering, tithe and offering. Amen? If you need an envelope, our usher will give you envelope. Our usher will give you envelope. Let's continue to give. Amen. Because from the tithe and offering that you give, that's what we use to pay this beautiful place, this big place. Amen. That's what we used to do. To pay bills. Amen. Also remember the $20. I mean, remember the $20 we give once a week. We call it building funds. We call it building funds. As we give, the Lord will bless us. Amen. The Lord will bless us. The Lord will bless you. Bless me over you. All of those that are watching online. I love my new iPad. Man. I really love it. I can't even take it out. Amen. Well, let me release this blessing while you are preparing your time. Let us please have the habit of supporting your church, paying our time, giving our offering. Even remember the twenty dollar we were giving at the hotel. A lot of people have stopped doing that. It's only by the masses of God. True. Let's start giving it. Amen. Told John one two while you are giving way to give on the screen. You know what it says? Say, beloved, I pray that. You may prosper. You may prosper. I believe I gave you the, the meaning of blessing last week when God empowered you to prosper. Amen. You may prosper in all things. In all things. 
Amen. As you continue to support this ministry, I declare in the name of Jesus, you will prosper in all things. If you want to prosper, shout a loud amen. He said, I pray that you may prosper in all things. How many things? All things. All around prosperity. In all things. And be in health. Amen. Be in health. Amen. God is so smart. How are you going to make you prosper financially and your health is not good? You will enjoy. Amen. Prosper in all things and be in health. Just as your what? As your soul prosper. I pray for all around prosperity. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that God will make you to prosper physically, emotionally, financially, spiritually. In the mighty name of Jesus. Even fasting help us to prosper in all things. Hallelujah. Fasting what? It makes us to what? To prosper in all things. Including finances. Amen. Including finances. So I pray in the name of Jesus Christ as you support this ministry with your time and your offering and with your time as well. I pray you will prosper physically prosper emotionally, you will prosper spiritually, you will prosper financially in the mighty name of Jesus Christ even now that you are fasting fasting will make you to prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know that fasting opens great doors great doors for you in the name of Jesus Christ. I release that blessing over you as you release your tithe you activate that blessing as you release it today, I'm telling you, you activate it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Physical prosperity, emotional prosperity, spiritual prosperity, financial prosperity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Even as you fast, the enemy will not be able to steal your finances in the name of Jesus Christ. Hmm. Dead consolation. Who's praying for that? I had that. I'm serious. Who is that? We've been praying for that. That cancellation. So shall it be in Jesus' name. No, I had that. Somebody has been praying for that cancellation. I don't know which area. But God say I will do it. In Jesus' name. And it shall spring forth. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands and give God praise. We have the envelope. We're ready to give. Already bless it. That you will prosper physically, you will prosper emotionally, you will prosper spiritually, you will prosper financially in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And every doors of opportunity that have been shut be open unto you in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, somebody say amen. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Amen. We have your tithe and offering, just bring it if you give online. Bring your phone and make contact so you can activate the blessing. Activate it in Jesus' name. Amen. Activate it in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Who offering is that? Who money is that? Who time? No, bring yours. No, no, don't give it to anybody. You can make contact with it. As you come, you put it, you activate it. Hallelujah. Be careful. I'm releasing. The word of God. If you do it, it will happen. Touch it. You activate that blessing. You activate that blessing. You activate that blessing. You activate that blessing. Activate it. Activate it. Activate it. Activate it. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you're going to give Sunday too, I'm going to release the same blessing. Come and activate it. For you making contact, you activate it. Glory to God. I can see it's like, like a ladder. Jacob's ladder. You see, activate it. Make contact. Activate it in the name of Jesus Christ. What are you activating? That you will prosper spiritually, prosper physically, prosper emotionally, prosper. Uh, which one again? 
financially in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it. So shall it be. If you are giving already during the week, who is that? Come touch it. If you're giving during the week already, come make contact with it. Amen. Sunday, you make contact. You're giving already during the week. Make contact. Double, double. Man, zepe, so passe. Double, double. Activate it. In the mind of the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. How do we activate blessing? Remember Sunday message? How do you activate blessings of God? Amen. How? How do you do that? King, young king. You always make notes. Why in church Sunday? Children ministry? Okay. How do you activate church? The cycle of blessing. How? Obedience. Number one. Just pay your time. Obedience. Number two. Oh, Dr. Elizabeth, come. Please come and activate it. Activate it. It's obedience. As you release it, you activate it. That blessing has been released. You know what happens when you release blessing? It's in the atmosphere. Amen. When you obey, you activate it. Amen. So, how do you activate blessing? Number one. Thank you, man. May God your what? Number one priority. Number one priority. Actually, I'm planning something. I don't know, maybe next year. We have so much stuff we're doing here. To so have like a once every quarter a business meeting. All the people that have business in the church. I'm talking to her Sunday. All the people that have business or project. We, we will meet once a month. We want to empower you. Maybe some of you don't, don't know. I have grace for business. Grace. I want to, want to empower you. Teach and pray. And not only that. For those other people to know each other. What we are doing. We are a community, right? We are a family of God. Amen. We need to come. You can project. You have business. What are you doing? Come. Maybe you can do it quarterly or once every two months and connect. But the fun part of it is the prayer. There's some fire prayer. We're going to pray. It's a lot of prayer. Have a lot of prayer. The fire prayer. You will prosper by force, by force. We, 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 I will meet with the leaders. Honest, I'm serious. They're coming to me after Sunday. I'm talking to those that have the business, want to know what you do. Amen. Other people should know what you do. We are family, right? You know, or you have a. Pro- project you're working on, or you just want to come to the meeting, it's open. Amen? That's how we can connect, we can pray, and we can see how we can help one another. Amen? There's some teaching. Teaching on business. Also in business, number one, make God your senior partner. Come on, can we say amen? Make who? God your senior partner. Partner. What does that mean? You don't do anything, make no decision until you talk to God. Until you pray. And let God help you in your prayer. In your business, rather. There are 10, there are ten points I have for business people. And everything you do, God, number one. Number two. Amen. May God your what? Your senior partner. I learned that in Genesis. Joseph. He made God the senior partner. Everywhere he goes, he prosper. As a housekeeper, he was an housekeeper. What if I saw? He prosper. In jail, he prosper. Everywhere he goes, because God's not only that, we will help you if you have a project in business. Even the Bible says, even his master saw that God. What if I go open his eyes to see that God was with Joseph? That's number one. Number one that will help. Amen? Come on, let's stand, let's go home. 
Are you blessed tonight? Tomorrow is just all prayer. Prayer. We're going to pray. Somebody that have a neck pain, who is that? Be healed now. In Jesus' name. Neck. Be healed. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Amen. Father, we thank you. Somebody has also your hands is itching. Who is that? In the name of... Is you? Open it. Huh? Itching. Yeah, I see that. Come quick. Come quick. Come quick. It's itching. I see that. I know they always say when it's itchy, you want to receive money. Is that true? See? You want to receive money? That's what they say. I don't know about that. Okay. Rub it. Get it. Get that one. And it will stop in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We look forward to see you tomorrow. Let us be here on time. Amen. Yeah, so it's itching. It's good. It will stop. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We exalt your holy name. We give you praise, glory, and honor. Let the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Let the rest, let it remain. And let it abide with us now and forevermore. And the church say, Amen. Amen. Don't break tonight. Come tomorrow. After prayer, we will break. Amen. Allow God, when you sleep, to deposit what? Spiritual power. Amen. And allow your power to what? Reproduce. Amen.